welcome back to the first episode of The Web Show, uh, a show about people, places, stories and faces from around the globe and uh, I've just put together a montage episode for the first one with some examples, including the legendary little Stephen Van Zandt, I caught up with him in New York City. Um, February 9th, 1964 changed everything. Um, it was the day that the Beatles played a variety show here called Ed Sullivan. Oh. And uh, in those days, um, the entire family watched this show. Yeah. It's hard to imagine. Yeah. There wasn't many channels back then, was there? No. There was, was that was a big show, Ed Sullivan. Literally three channels. Um, and uh, But something like um, 73 million people watched that night, uh, which was... Uh, remember the song they did? Sorry? Do you remember the song they played? Yeah, they started with All My Lovin'. Um, and they did... Uh, um, I think five that first night, I think. Wow. Um, uh, they did the Cornball classic, Till There Was You, you know, for the older folks. Um, um, probably I Want to Hold Your Hand, probably She Loves You, and maybe Twist and Shout, something like that. Wow. Um, they were on three, three successive weeks. And um, literally the whole world changed mm. that day, actually. I mean... Our culture completely changed that day. Uh, it was the Big Bang in sort of separating the past from the present. Um, yeah, so his episode is just amazing. You just learn so much from a guy who's seen it and done it all. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what you learn from Warwick Kappa, but it's always fun catching up with him. Here's a little snippet with when the wizard. I had you on the radio that time, I asked you about like the practice you used to put in for taking speakies, because you have taken some of the greatest speakies anyone's ever seen. I do admire your honest, honesty, Andrew. No, yep. well, you know that is true. Like, yeah. um, did you practice? Did you tell me you used to practice at the park and pretty lucky you didn't break your neck? Yes, I used to go up there when I was nine years of age and uh, go there five nights a week and practice one on one for hours. Just getting, just getting. Oh, that's my home. That's yeah. my, one of my stock. <laughs> but um, right on cue. Thanks very much. But um. What I do is just practice for hours and hours for timing. I was yeah. quite good at high jump, and I used to just just time the ball, just when it floated up above his head. Yeah. He jumped right, right straight at the exact same time. Yeah. It was poetry in motion. Yeah, so there he is, Warwick Kappa, and um, one of the random adventures, probably one of the fun ones. I dare say this is going to be one of the most popular shows when I put it together. He's filming behind the scenes on one of the top Hollywood porn shoots. I took my friend Vinny with me, and we made our way up into the hills. And once again, no rules with a home video camera. And here's a quick chat with Jessica Drake. All right, so on the set in Hollywood with the lovely Jessica Drake from Wicked Pictures, how are you? Hi, I'm great. And <laughs> we're on the set of The Collector, directed by Brad Armstrong for Wicked Pictures. And it's being shot on film. It's very exciting. Okay, now can I ask a little bit about you? Where did you, where did you grow up in America? Um, I'm originally from San Antonio. Okay. Texas. A, I'm a Texas girl. How does a young Texas girl end up in Hollywood uh, working in the adult industry? I'd love to know that. Luck. <laughs> really? Yeah. Something you always wanted to do? Um, I Originally I wanted to feature dance. I wanted to be one of those girls that the club pays and you go do the big shows. And I was really interested in that and so I, I went to go and meet some people and I ended up meeting Michael Raven who is also a contract player for Wicked and he pretty much brought me into it. Okay. So that was about four years ago. And now a lot of people in the world want to think that they can love their job. So let me ask you, do you love your job? I love my job. What's your favorite thing about it? Uh, the absolute favorite thing to me about my job would have to be the fact that I have great, great sex with people. And <laughs> then we all go home afterwards. <laughs> yes, I think that's going to be a pretty popular show. Um, a fun day that was on the Hollywood porn shoot. But speaking of great stories, it doesn't get any better than this from Australia. Businessman Phil Hart and his amazing story and how he got things going with his career. Another inspiring story. It's got to be a film someday. <laughs> Tell us about the story in the Osmark Cafe. Yeah, mate, I, I was 20, what am I now, 48, so it was 21 years ago, so I was young and, and even more arrogant and full of myself back then. Um, but I was pushed into a corner by Hard Rock Cafes and um, we were about to open seven days out from uh, the big opening of Osrock. 
and Hard Rock uh, got a bit pissed off and thought, well, we've got to stop this young this young bloke sort of stealing our thunder. So four years before they came to Australia, um, we decided to open. So we had Triple M, we had uh, everybody in town uh, coming along. Kenny Rogers was in town, Dolly Parton was there, we had the cockroaches, we had everybody all coming to Oz Rock. Yeah. And it was the first themed cafe in Australia. We were the first ever to do it. And it was five floors. And... Um, so the week out, I got uh, I got this injunction in the mail saying, "Boys, you're no longer you're not going to open. If you go ahead, we're going to sue your ass." So um, I went down to the, uh, the the business registrations name, found out that it w that they could stop me um, until we went to court. So uh, they pulled the name, the registration name off me until we went to court. So I went down and got hold of a mate of mine who was this burnt out, drunk and old solicitor that hadn't won a case ever. Said, "Mate, you just got to take me to court." And uh, I'd found out that through the through the uh, business registration names that you can actually register anything that you like, any business, if it's your own name. So I went down, they met the bloke, and he said, well, Mr. Hart, he said, why don't you call it Hearts and stop all the aggravation? And he said, you know, Hearts sounds really good, so my ego, as big as it is, it, it really thought, sounded great. Um, so I thought, well, no, no, I'll try a bit harder. So I took all the books home, read them all up, and found out that I could actually call it my own name. So for $49, I went around the corner, changed my name to Mr. Oz Rock Cafe instead of Philip James Hart. It's now Oz Rock Cafe. And um, we went to court. And uh, Hard Rock walked in, and uh, 30 seconds later, the judge brought the hammer down, walked him out, and said, uh, "Have a great night." <laughs> so the beat, so the, the papers were the beat goes on with Mr. Oz Rock Cafe. When you look back on stories like that, it must still give you a sense of just comedy, right? That you did, you did that. Yeah, it is, mate. It, 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 it you know, you, you, you do things as you're growing up. You do things, and you, you really don't know what the hell you're doing. Mm. And uh, I didn't know I was going to run an event, international event company. You know, I'm, I've been a chef all my life. You know, I was expelled from school at 14. So there's an example, once again, of why I love just making a show about stories, because you get inspired knowing that anything's possible, including this one, a great story from Rocky actor Burt Young. He wrote a letter that absolutely changed his life. Yeah, it's a corny story, I told it a lot, but I'll, 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 I'll abbreviate it. Um, I was in every business that didn't need an inventory. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, my wife was hating me pretty good then. I hear mama calls. <laughs> she knew something too. I don't have a baby. Well, no, it was not mine either. <laughs> and uh, I met this girl. And I, I wasn't like a wolf type of guy. But she was so beautiful. And she worked in a bar like on Wednesday night. I'd go every Wednesday for a month. She'd have nothing to do with me. She'd talk to everybody else. This in New York? Yeah. And then I'd be humble one night, another I'd be tough guy. Another. And I, I finally, as a last resort, I started rapping about her being an actor. And she lit up. And she said she wanted to study with Lee Strasberg, only she couldn't get in. So I thought it was a girl. I didn't know who the hell Lee Strasberg was. <laughs> I found out who he was, I wrote a letter. Guy invites me over his house. The letter, the letter was... I'm not making a new, I have a good conk. Yeah, I'm up there. You know. Dearly, if an acting background is a prerequisite, read no further. Hello, if you're still with me, acting none, life credits, threat plenty. A, first assault conviction, B, first baby born, C, first homicide indictment, all the way down, very flip. And at the end, I said, seriously, Lee, I don't know if acting has anything for me or vice versa, but I'm treading water. See me. He calls me over his house. That's a cool story. And then I'm over his house. I never talked to strangers then at all. I was a pure street guy, you know. And uh, so now knowing he fingerprinted Marlon Brando, Marlon Monroe, you know, I was even more tight-lipped. You know. And he's trying to draw me out. And I'm giving him one-syllable answers. You know, yeah, no, no, no. And he says, I don't think you could be an actor. So I got up to leave. He says, sit down. <laughs> He says, I never saw such tension in a man's face. Wow. He says, but I feel you're an emotional library. Would you work with me? And that's how I started. Wow, that's an awesome story.
Yeah, it's yeah. an amazing story and one of many that you'll get to see on the web show as we hopefully go on a journey together. That's what I hope it's all about. Travelling around the world without a clue as to what's going to happen, but guaranteed always something does. And uh, you'll see it not only on the web show here, but also on the internet, on YouTube and on MySpace, getting near 5 million views. So uh, thanks for checking it out and more to come on the web show.